And the soldiers led him away inside the uh, palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole uh, <clears throat> battalion, and they clothed him in a purple, purple cloak, and uh, twisting together a crown of thrones, they put, in, put it on him. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they were striking his head with a reed, and spitting on him, and kneeling down in homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own cloak on him. And they led him out to crucify him. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, the place called uh, uh, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Kolkata, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the church against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by deride him, waging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and Rebuild it in three days. Save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priest with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also uh, reviled him. Amen. The title of my sermon today is Jesus Crucifixion. Jesus was crucified upon the cross. The Son of God and the God Himself, the Son God, out of the triumph. Uh, he is now crucified. According to Rome chapter 5, we find this. Without the blood, there is no redemption. So this is the redemption that Jesus uh, gave us to redeem us from the sin, from the death. Uh, this is from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. We all are the sinners. And the sin deserves the death. The price of the sin is death. No exception. So only the death is to redeem the death. So we all are supposed to be died. But it is Jesus Christ who came and redeemed us by his blood. Means he died for us so that we are not to die because of Jesus Christ. This is the redemption, exchanging the life of Jesus with the life of us. By the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross, we have been saved. This is the salvation. And nobody can do that, this, but Jesus Christ. So we have Acts chapter 4, 12, saying, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So there is no other name. Some people say other name like Mohammed or Buddha, but only the name of Jesus 
is the, is the name that the we be saved. By the blood of Jesus Christ, we all are saved. As you all know that, by the sin, we, have be, we became the enemies to God. Enemies to God means we are standing against God. Do you remember what happened in time of the sin, when the sin came into the world? Genesis chapter 3, verses 4 and 5 says, But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and that you will be like God, knowing good and evil. As you know, this is a lie. No one can be like God. But this serpent is telling a lie to the woman and saying that if you eat of it, you will be like God. Your eyes will be open and you will see what is evil and what is good. It was a temptation for the woman. And she looked at the tree and the fruit which was forgive, uh, 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 not to be allowed. But then she looked and uh, she got the temptation. We all know, we need to know that as we enemies to God, we have to stand in front of God because God is punishing the enemies and uh, God is almighty God. So Hebrews chapter 10, 31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. What a horrible thing for us, standing against God. We are weak, we are nothing. If God decides, we'll be perished forever. So it is fear that we are standing against God as enemies. But good news is given to us. It is the good news that we find in Jesus Christ who died for us, so that, who gave us the redemption, forgiveness of the sins. So for it, while we were enemies reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. Romans chapter 5, 10 says, Yes, we were reconciled with God. We are no longer enemies to God because of Jesus Christ, who forgave all our sins. So in Jesus, by Jesus, through Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we are now the children of God, reconciled to God. This Jesus who died 2,000 years ago, it's the same Jesus that He is saving us now, leading us. And also the same Jesus is leading up to the eternity, into the future. Hebrews 13a says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This Jesus who gives us the love, which one is Con, uh, no conditional, uh, unconditional, and uh, everlasting love, that love is given through Jesus Christ. And that Jesus crucified today, according to the scripture, we find this. And uh, let us have the meaning of the cross. Verse 16 says, The soldiers led him away inside the place. That is, governor's headquarters. And they called together as a whole battalion. And they clothed him, Jesus, a purple cloth. And a twisting together a crown of thrones, they put it on him. Number one, they clothed Jesus a purple cloth. Purple cloth. The color was crimson, uh, the red. And this one is, is especially made out of uh, a worm, special worm, the crimson, crimson worm. Uh, very rare. So you, 
by the time of Jesus and also by the time of the Old Testament as well, to find those worm, very hard to find, and with the worm collect and uh, uh, kill, and the blood of the worm uh, be used for the coloring of a specific cloth. So that color, purple or crimson color, very precious in the time of the Bible. So uh, the color, uh, the cloth uh, was uh, given to uh, high class people, especially king or uh, high priest or uh, high, high rank uh, soldiers. And this time, they uh, clothed that uh, to Jesus Christ. Uh, that means that they are honoring Jesus as the king of the Jew. The king had that kind of color uh, clothing. But it was kind of mocking, not real honor, but mocking as they gave Jesus that clothing. And also, they gave him a crown. As you know, a king is wearing a crown. But this time, they made uh, the crown out of uh, thrones. Not by gold, not by silver, but by thrones. So, by the purple clock and by the uh, uh, crown of thrones, uh, they pretend to honor Jesus as the King of Jews. Uh, let me explain some more about this crimson worm. As you know, uh, the little uh, worm, crimson worm, be collected, and uh, uh, they uh, kill the worm to make, uh, to take out the blood for the coloring, and. Uh, uh, we find this when Jesus said, uh, according to uh, Psalm 22, as a prophecy of Jesus Christ, we find this, 22 verse 6 says, But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. Here, it was uh, uh, it was a psalm, but that this was a prophecy again uh, uh, for Jesus Christ. I am a worm, not a man. Here, the worm is not kind of, uh, you know what, any any worm, but a specific worm, which is a crimson worm. So that specific worm to make the coloring of the cloth for the high class people, very precious one. So. Jesus, in that sense, identified himself, be crushed to shed the blood, which is the, the red, the crimson color. So uh, that was the clock that he was wearing. It was their mocking, the people's mocking Jesus. However, no matter they recognized or not, Consciousnessly or unconsciousnessly, they were fulfilling the prophets of the Old Testament. They were fulfilling the will of God, even though they were not intending that. However, it was God who finally accomplished the words of God written in the Bible of Jesus Christ. And they began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews. Yes, of course, this was not coming from their heart. They were mocking. Still, they were saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews. Even though they didn't believe that, but their mouth was speaking that out. And also, they were striking his head with a reed. The reed, in other parallel by uh, the gospel, were given to was given to Jesus by the hand as the sign of the staff or scepter of a king holding that as the authority and the power practicing. So that read uh, 
they took and hit the head of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, and also they are speeding on him and then kneeling down in homage to him. So by that, hitting Jesus by the head with the reed and speeding on him and then kneeling down in homage to him, they all are uh, making fun of Jesus Christ. But still, there is something we find. Even though they didn't care, even though they didn't do that out of their hearts, but it was accomplishment of what God planned. Yes, eventually speaking, all the news will, you know what, will be uh, down to the ground as they are honoring the name of Jesus Christ when Jesus comes again as the judge. Philippians chapter 2 verses, verses 9 to 11 says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is, is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So this time they are mocking at Jesus Christ, ridicule Jesus. However, the time will come soon that they will do that as they are now practicing when Jesus comes again, when Jesus got glory of God. So this is eventually will be accomplished. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothing on him. And they led him out to crucify him. It was their plan to do that. After mocking at Jesus with the purple cloak, they exchanged the cloth of Jesus and gave Jesus his own cloak. But it was also for the fulfillment of the prophecy that uh, the uh, cloth of Jesus Christ will be divided among the soldiers. They didn't know that, but it was God's plan. So now we find this. We, people who are obeying the word of God, as they understand the word of God, they fulfill the words of God intentionally, like Jesus Christ, and like the children of God, like us children, Christians. But also, non-Christians who do not trust in Jesus Christ, who do not believe in God, they also are fulfilling the words of God, even though they do not recognize, even though they do not agree, still they are fulfilling the words of God. We find this a clue from here. And as they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus to carry his cross. There was a man who was Simon from Cyrene, had two sons, Alexander and Rufus, who was compelled to carry the cross for Jesus. Now we need to think about this person. He was not intended to do anything, but he was compelled to do that, enforced. But what happened eventually? It was not his will, but God's will, so that he was carrying the cross for Jesus Christ. And this person and his family uh, is well uh, uh, you know, recognized by Christian churches not long after. For example, Romans chapter 16, we find this. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. This is what Paul wrote to the church in Rome when he was in the Corinth. He'd never been there in the Rome, but the, 
he recognized that there are some good people, some churches like uh, five churches, home churches in the Rome area. And uh, one was with this family, Rufus and his mother. And this Rufu, Rufus was one of the two sons of this Simon of Cyrene. And his mother was the wife of this Simon. And Paul is writing that greet, grief them, uh, greet them, Rufus and his mother, who are in Rome. As you know, Rome was uh, under the severe uh, hard persecutions uh, by, by the Rome government, especially the emperor uh, oppressed the church so that many people came under the ground. And there they were still believing in God and Paul is writing a letter to the Rome anticipating to visit the Rome someday. And he is now writing that also his mother who has been a mother to me as well. Wow. Paul is writing that she is also my mother as well. What does that mean? We find this dedication of this woman, wife of the Simon, and the serving the church, especially the poor, as a mother cares a son. So one person here we find and forced to carry the cross for Jesus. He has become the witness of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It was not his intention, but God's intention, so that he was enforced to do that. And finally, he became Christian, leading his family to uh, the Christian church, especially his son Rufus and also his wife, to be serving the church as the mother of Paul. And they brought him to the place called Kolkata, which means the place of the skull. It was outside of the gate. And we find Hebrews chapter 13, 12. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his blood. So Jesus was put outside the gate. Uh, like a, uh, uh, like a, you know, a sacrificing for the people, he was put outside of the gate, carrying all the sins of the people. Through his own blood, he sanctified all of us. So here, it was their plan, their project. The soldiers, Roman soldiers brought him out. But it was already written in the Bible, and they are fulfilling the prophecies of Jesus Christ. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. The wine mixed with myrrh was given to those uh, criminals uh, to be crucified upon the cross, uh, which was like a painkiller medicine. But Jesus refused. Why Jesus refused that? Because Jesus wanted to take all the sufferings per se as he is. It was the suffering for all the people. People's suffering Jesus now is taking for himself. And uh, they crucified him and divided his garments among them. And casting lots for them to decide what each should uh, take. And this also was a fulfillment of the prophecy. Psalm 22, verse 18 says, They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast the lot. So they, they didn't intend. They did not know what was written in the Old Testament. But eventually speaking, they were fulfilling the words of God. This is what I say, that not only Jesus, but also the old Christians, 
as well as all non-Christians. We all come together to fulfill the words of God. So things happening is from the words of God. When God says, let there be light, there was a light. So all things that we find are fulfillment of the words of God. So we find this. The blessing is given to us when we know this and glorify the name of God. But non-Christians who do not know this, even though they fulfill the words of God, they do not know how to praise the Lord. That's unhappiness for them. So we all need to let all the people know this. Eventually, the will of God will be fulfilled. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. Today, it is 9 o'clock in the morning. And the inscription of the charge against him was written and read, the king of the Jews. As you know, that was um, the title of uh, the, you know, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Uh, in a sense, uh, politically, and in a sense, by mocking. But this also was fulfillment of the words of God in the Old Testament. Jesus is to be called the king of the Jews. And also we have another case that is to be fulfilled uh, according to the word of God, which is two criminals were sent, uh, crucified together with Jesus Christ. Verse 28, 27 says, And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and the one on his left. Why, there is, why, there is, uh, uh, why not only one cross? but other two crosses on the left and on the right. Why? Because this is also to fulfill the words of God. Again and again I tell you, all things happened to Jesus be fulfilled the fulfillment of the words of God. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 53, verse 12. We find this. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Transgressors. So he was numbered with the transgressors. Now, numbers, <clears throat> you see, <clears throat> by crucified together with the criminals, Jesus was numbered with the transgressors. However, yet he bore his sin of many and then makes intercession for the transgressors. So he was among the, uh, among the transgressors, but he was not part of it, part of them, but the, he was the intercession for the transgressors. So now we find this. So one of the two, when he speak to Jesus, spoke to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you go to the, your kingdom. Then Jesus said, tonight you will be with me in the kingdom of heaven. So that is the way Jesus made intercession for the trans transgressors. In this case, we find not only him, one of the two, but all of us here, we now find ourselves. Jesus is leading us to the kingdom of heaven, as we believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. And those who passed by derided him, oh, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. As they were first witnessing in the council, uh, now they are continuing, saying that you said, you destroy the temple and you build the temple in three days. It is a misunderstanding of what Jesus said. When Jesus said about that, it was his body, not the temple by the building, but temple by the, san the, the sanctuary, that the, you destroy me, you kill me, but I will live 
again in three days. It was his resurrection he mentioned, but they did not know. Now they are mocking again about Jesus by that, according to their misunderstanding. And they continued saying, save yourself and come down from the cross. Save yourself. They are denying the fact that Jesus is now saving the world. They did not come to the understanding. And they said, you save yourself and come down. So their understanding was very much limited and not correct at all. Jesus is saving now the world, whole world by his crucifixion. But they thought by coming down from the cross, Jesus saves himself. And then they will come to believe. But that is not the case. You come down from the cross. What does that mean? Stop dying there upon the cross. Stop crucifying yourself there. Uh, this reminds us of the temptation, one of the temptations, three temptations in the desert after 40 day fasting. And the tempter came and said to him, Matthew chapter 4, 3. If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. The tempter came to Jesus. If you are Son of God, you command the stone to be the loaves of bread. What does that mean? Jesus, he himself is to be the bread of life, right? Do you remember what happened in the Last Supper when Jesus broke the bread and said, take this, this is my body given to you. Breaking the bread is now is fulfilled. His breaking the bread in the Last Supper was a kind of prophecy which would be fulfilled soon upon the cross. By the crucifixion, Jesus is now breaking his body and uh, give, give, and, uh, giving to the people for the everlasting life. But the Satan in the desert, after 40 day fasting says, make, command the stone to make the bread. What does that mean? You replace that, your body, with the stone. So it means you stop crucifying yourself. Kind of temptation not to go to the crucifixion. This kind of temptation was brought to Jesus even by Peter who said, no, Jesus, no cross is to be given to you. Remember that? When Jesus said, you Satan, get out of me. You are making me stumble down. You do not think about the will of God, but the humans. So same thing when Peter said, no cross, here the people are mocking at Jesus, challenging. You come down. Stop crucifying yourself. All are connected, interconnected by the Satan's project that Jesus not to be crucified, not to shed blood to, cleansing, uh, to, to cleanse us, our sins. But Jesus still crucified and fulfilled all the plans of God to save the human beings by shedding his precious blood. And this time the high priest and the scribes spoke against Jesus. They mocked him to one another saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Look, they are the high priests and the scribes. High priests were experts in the sacrifices. And the scribes were experts in the words of God. But they were not understanding the real meaning of sacrifices and also real meaning of the scriptures. The salvation of Jesus Christ is to crucify himself upon the cross as God planned. And by his dying upon the cross, he redeems, he redeems 
of people's sins. And that part which is, comes from the sacrifices of the, all the sacrifices in the Old Testament, anticipating for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, this high priest did not come to understanding and the scribes did not know what the scripture said. This is an irony. So here we find high priests and scribes were among the people mocking at Jesus Christ. We now come to understanding why it was the secret, the cross, crucifixion of Jesus was the secret. Not many people know that. Even though they see the cross, but they do not come to the real understanding. We need to now think about it very clearly and deeply. And uh, let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe they spoke against God, Jesus Christ, like this. You come down and we see and we believe. Why this is a nonsense? Because the belief, they said, we may believe when you come down. But, but the belief is not be made when Jesus come down, but when Jesus died there, shedding the blood and fulfilling all the promises of God, all the prophecies. When Jesus said, it is done, fulfilled, and died there, our belief started from there. Our belief is coming from the cross where Jesus died. Okay? So, it is not the time when Jesus come down from the cross, but it was the time when Jesus died there. Our belief starts. They did not know that. Things clear why Paul wrote, uh, wrote this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says, for the, word of, for the word of the cross is fully to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of God related to the cross has been fully to those who are perishing. Like the parishes here, the high priest and the scribes, they are perishing. That's why they didn't come to the understanding why Jesus is dying there, crucifying himself there. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. We find the power of God in the cross. It is not the place of the criminal dying and the weak dying, having no power, no salvation there signified. No, it is the power of God. By the death of Jesus Christ, all we are now living. And by obeying the words of God, Jesus, we are now forgiven the sins. Sisters, we are in the Lent, working with Jesus Christ the 40 days, as we remember the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. We need to look at the cross each day. And uh, we appreciate Jesus Christ crucifying himself upon the cross. Through that, our sins be forgiven. We have a hymnal. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Their precious fountain, free to all a healing stream, flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross. Be my glory forever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your leading us to the cross. Many people have misunderstandings so that they are mocking against Jesus, never appreciating what Jesus has done upon the cross the forgiveness of sins, redeeming the sinners. But we are, we thank you that we are children of God, understanding 
the preciousness of Jesus Christ, the shedding the blood upon the cross. Because of the cross, we have been forgiven our sins. We thank you for your leading up to the cross. Each time we want to be nearer to the cross, day by day, month to by, month, to month, year to year. Oh God, please lead us to the cross so that we understand the secret of Jesus Christ, how he saved us. We believe in Jesus Christ and we want to deliver this good news to the people telling the people what is the power of God which is revealed in the cross. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.